Sabbath Center, St. Louis, our State Farm Insurance, Missouri Valley Conference, second semifinal, Northern Iowa meeting the Southern Illinois Salukis. Here's our Bud Light lineups. Presentation of Bud Light, great taste for your great times. Bud Light. Northern Iowa, Ben Jacobson, one of the greatest players in this conference. And John Little has been a warrior for this team. Stout and Coleman now. Watch these two guys. They were dominant in the game earlier this year in Cedar Falls against the Salukis. We mentioned uh, Randall Falk are inside, but these guards, when they get going, they're as good as any in the league, particularly like Jamal Tatum, if he can get it going with his shot. Uh, also, Kyle Smith-Peters not starting this game, as Tony Young will be starting with Tatum in the backcourt along with Mullins, but they get going. They're tough to beat. Check in now with Charlie Spooner's keys to the game, brought to you by National City, where they want to make sure that banking is simple for lives that aren't. You and I getting to the line is very important for a couple of reasons. One is they hit free throws so well, but the other thing is they can't afford fouls because their bench isn't that deep. Inside attack is important. You've already touched on that, Mitch. For the Salukis, it's always the same mantra. Heat them up and then meet the Falker. We talked about that. He's got to play today, and there, I have no doubt that he'll give a great effort. It's just a question of if he's going to have to be able to handle all the big people that will run at him. Let's take a look at our series history brought to you by Sirius Satellite Radio. Sirius is unbeatable radio. All radio is not created equal. There's the third meeting in the Valley Tournament between the two. Southern Illinois won both previous contests. They split the regular season series. In fact, they played the last regular season weekend. And Tony Young hit a runner in the lane to beat Northern Iowa, 45-44. As Southern Illinois, 20 and 10 on the year, Northern Iowa 23 and 8 in the game in Cedar Falls. It also was tightly contested. In fact, it went to overtime, but the big guys in the middle for Northern Iowa got it done in that game. Two high RPI teams here. Six teams in the Valley in the top 45 in the RPI. Southern Illinois is at 44, Charlie. Northern Iowa is at 21. They've had some great non-conference wins. They won at LSU. They beat the University of Iowa. Northern Iowa's had a great season, but we thought they ran out of gas in February. They were good when I saw them, Mitch. I saw them in Las Vegas in December. After they already defeated LSU at LSU, they came out and beat Dayton. And I thought at the time they were about as good as anyone. But then injuries hit them. And then having the short bench, I think, just wore guys down. But they looked happy and they looked fresh now. Ben Jacobson leading the league in minutes played. This guy averages playing about 36 minutes a game. And that's the average. He had to play 48 against the Bucknell Bison. And on this bench, the Southern Illinois Salukis. Four straight regular season Valley titles prior to this year when Wichita State took it away. But this group now, they've been to four straight NCAA tournaments, but a very young team. Darren Brooks uh, graduated, so did Stetson Hairston. Younger guys had to mature, take on more of roles, and they've certainly done that. Well, they've, they've done a great job. As you mentioned yesterday, they started the season, had some rough moments. And then I tell you, they, they made themselves into a good ball club. They listened to their coaches, and they, and they became great defenders. Heating them up is what they do best. That's how they win. Scoring isn't always easy for this ball club. They got off to a rocky start and then won 11 straight games. And just people now know about the Egyptian dogs across the country with their frequent trips to the big dance. But here's something else you need to know. Only six schools have more wins than Southern Illinois the past five seasons. Those six, Duke, Illinois, Yukon, Gonzaga, Pitt, and Kansas. Seventh on the list, Southern Illinois, coached by Chris Lowry. Chris played here at Southern Illinois. The point guard won two Arch Madness titles. 47 wins in two years. The first coach in SIU history to win 20 games in his first two seasons. And his counterpart, one of the hotter names right now in college basketball, Greg McDermott. 65 wins over the past three years. 
in his fifth season. He simply brought consistent winning to the Cedar Valley. Eldon Miller had had his moments. Norm Stewart was there when they were in the old college division, but McDermott has done it and done it over a three-year span. And you can tell the interest, how much it's picked up. We saw it in the crowds that were present at the game. But just look at the people here. He's got people talking basketball, new arena next year. Things are looking up for people. Crowd for the semifinal. Bradley has already won. The fifth seed Bradley Braves, hot as any team in the country right now, awaits the winner of this one. The first possession of this game is Northern Iowa's game on with Arch Madness in the Valley. And defense will be an issue again in this game, just like it was the last. It's amazing, but the teams that win seem to be the ones that guard. We say it all year long, this entire league guards. Every game so far in this tournament have been excellent defensive efforts. Four to shoot. Tough shot, John Little. That, that's a full shot clock of defending. And that was a tough shot, just like you said. Southern Illinois, well known for its defense. Falker underneath on Stout. Stout's fouling. Let's go to Tom Ackerman. Mitch, Southern Illinois guard Jamal Tatum wanted to do something different for the game yesterday against Evansville. So he went with the team manager to the equipment room and secured black shoes and black socks for all of the players. They went to each hotel room, gave them out to all of the players. Tony Young put them on and said, you know, it gives you a bit of a swagger when you walk out onto the court. And it seemed to have worked. Tom, didn't he sneak in there with that equipment guy? Yeah, he did. He says he crawled in there. He kind of joked about that. <laughs> Well, a bucket by Matt Shaw of Southern Illinois to tie the game, and now a throwaway. There's Eric Coleman trying to find Jacobs and throws it to the scorer's table. Look at Jamal Tatum. He now in the shoe business. <laughs> Need a 10 D with. <laughs> I don't know if I'm really keen on that high top. But... Shaw can hit that shot, too. If it doesn't go for Falker, somebody's going to have to get a body on him. It's going to be him against the world inside, though, I think. Look at the defensive pressure. See where the ball's being played, Mitch. It's above, above the three-point line all the time, and not by design. Southern Illinois will guard you and guard you and guard you. Jacobson in the corner. Those type plays happen early in the game. When you're nervous, a little tight. And this is the nervous day, the semifinal day. Stout missing the spinner. Chris Lowry giving a play to his freshman point guard, Brian Mullins. A nice box out by Shaw then also. Tatum. He has struggled shooting the ball from three, but he had 25 against Evansville yesterday. He looked pretty definite about that. He was ready to shoot that one. Stout, good position. Used the guard screen across the lane. The guard made a straight cut and then just went across the lane and screened. Mullins taking it to the rack. It's an offensive foul on Brian Mullins. The charge taken by Brooks McCallum of Northern Iowa. Three minutes into the game, it's a 4 4 tie. Sub coming in is a pretty fair player, also. Eric Crawford. Yeah. Broke his right foot against Creighton. Missed from mid-January. We saw his return game against Missouri State at home. They rallied for 23 wins. I'm not sure they would have got there if Crawford wouldn't have come back. Fundamentally, just about as sound as any player you're going to find. And he can shoot the three. I would guess, if anything, his probably his defending is down just a little. 
Maybe his dribble penetration down a little. And only because of the broken foot. Yes. Tatum, Ooh. sweet crossover. Sets up Shaw, but then there's all kinds of help. Two good helps on the count. Young travel. Jacobson with the defense. Ben Jacobson last year led the league in scoring. This year he's dropped off the sixth in the league. But I don't think he gets enough credit for his defending. He defends well, and he's such a smart player. He helps well when he's away from the ball. No, he's, a, he's just good at everything he does. Man. Very athletic. The shooting, I, for whatever reason, has not been as, as good as what he would probably be expected to be. Coleman gets pushed away out there by oh, Falker. Falker defending that far out on the floor. You get a center that can go out like that. Coleman, he of the long arms, gets a foul. Shaw gets the foul. Trying to get his nose back in joint from yesterday. <laughs> Four four time here at our under 16 timeout. Stay tuned to our halftime report brought to you by Poor Richards, two great St. Louis locations, Fenton at 141 Bulls and Eureka near 109 and Interstate 44. Poor Richards serves over two tons of wings every week. To check out Poor Richards menu, visit poorrichardsstl.com. Greg McDermott's team better defensive this year. We talked about it nine times. He's held opponents under 50 points, Boone, including the last two games, 42 and 46. Well, Max teams defend and they don't foul when they defend. I mean, it's, that's the main thing. Most teams that, that, that are good defensively hack and beat on people and his don't. They are they are just amazing in that regard. They've outscored their opponents 147 points at the line. Coleman misses this one, 58% shooter. What well, was he good in Cedar Falls against Southern Illinois? His free throw shooting was sort of streaky. If he starts out and hits a couple, then he's pretty good. And if he misses a couple, then sometimes it's not a good omen. Walker, nice oh, speed. Nice. Mullins. I mean, Falker got it there and squatted Charlie. He was low. We've talked about him a little bit, Mitch, but I don't think we've given him enough credit for all that he does. That was an assist right there. He defends, he rebounds, block shots. Young stepped out. That was caused in part by Falker right here. Of course, there's Falker on the, this is his offensive play. Great job of catching, and he knew, he knew that McCown's been doubling, so he just hunts the open man, and Mullins is smart enough to go to the spot. Now, you can make a DVD of that and show a post player how to get their tail feathers down and catch the ball. Well, sure you can, and the other thing you can show is a guard how to pay attention. A three, and he could show him how to Eric Crawford to shoot threes. 29th three of the year. He's 34% beyond bonus distance. Seven six, Northern Iowa. You see how soft McCown's playing Mullins, inviting him to shoot the basketball. That time Coleman checked off Falker. Coleman's got a lot of energy today. I think that's what uh, Mac was telling him just a minute ago to slow down just to scope. <laughs> well, he was good late in that game against Missouri State last night. Jacobson. And that shot has just not fallen for him this year. Well, it gets in your mind, Mitch, and you know that. It's just like in baseball when you get in a slump, the same thing happens to shooters, punters. He is two for 11 this year from three against Southern Illinois and four of his last 15 from three point range. Cushion for Mullins, but sure not one for Tatum. In this game, if you can get an easy basket, a run out basket, put back, it really, really it looks seems bigger than usual. 
Oh, oh, hard foul. Falker all over Eric Coleman. First foul. They got to keep Falker out of foul trouble. You think Coleman's got a chance to make this shot? Let's listen to this. <laughs> Almost makes you wish you didn't have good position offensively. <laughs> I think we experienced all five senses. <laughs> and hope we have some of them left when it's completed. Coleman tastes the sweet nectar of a made free throw. <laughs> Coleman 58% from the foul line. Interestingly enough, he's 58% from the field. Leads the league in that category. Sam Perkins look alike. That big left hand fires in his second foul off the shot. Those look pretty good right there. Now, here's what Southern Illinois has got to challenge. When Falker rests or to avoid foul trouble, who's going to step up? We saw Jamal Foster step up against Evansville last night with a career high 10 points. I'm just getting ready to say it would be interesting if Foster continues the play he had last night because he was, he was a very assertive basketball player. He's been screening well so far. Let's see if the rest of the game came with him. Now he's not getting any easy looks either, Mitch. Tatum hard curl, three to shoot. Clemens, a hustler off the bench. Did we see that last night? <laughs> a couple thousand times. <laughs> just goes after the ball, and the Salukis just rebounded last night. They were everything. They were after everything. Spoon the out rebound at Evansville by 19 rebounds. And how many offensive boards? Over 20. Good defense again by Northern Iowa. And that's hard when it's a second possession. You're, you're defending really for almost a minute here. Staying him out of control. A little stayed right with him. Great defense in by Little. Absolutely great. The defense on this end of the floor is good, too. They only give up 56.9. They're fifth in the country. McCowan hit big threes last night. That's almost, that's not considered control when he bats it like that. So no over and back, but what a save. He looked like a hockey goalie kicking a puck out of the net. We're seeing the same effort here we saw in the first game. McCowan, nice fake, no finish. And Foster's over his back. Tough play right there for Foster. Brooks McCowan, 101st Airborne Division, wearing purple. <laughs> To the Savage Center in downtown St. Louis. It's 9 6 Northern Iowa with the lead. 11 47 to go in our first half of play. Our Prairie Farms NBC Scholar athlete Desiree Osborne, a senior distance runner from Linden, Kansas. Osborne captured the 2005 cross country individual title. Two time Scholar athlete, a 3.4 GPA and exercise science. Academics important to the NBC. We salute Desiree Osborne, today's Prairie Farms NBC Scholar athlete. As we throw it back over to Mitch Holtis, Mitch, you consider what's happened already for those of you that are just joining us 60 52 Bradley wins in their game a number five seed advancing to the final and for Bradley second time in St. Louis they've been to that final Mitch and a five seed with a 37 RPI the hits just keep on coming in the valley stout deep it's Foster something was going to happen you know if it's going to be good or bad there was it's a lot of activity. I'm going to tell you the most exciting play of this game. Spoon's going to be a missed shot. It's going to look like a riot during the French Revolution. <laughs> Mr. Ivan would say these fellows are busy. Let's see Robespierre out here someplace. Foster liked that scoring yesterday, but missed that shot. Pick and roll is a good option because completely lost his man. Helped by Mullins underneath. 
very good help by Mullins underneath. Well, with a game like this, you got to get ready for a hat like this. Did you bring your hat? Spoon like this one? <laughs> Is that a mammal or a reptile? I would say it has characteristics of both. Valley's brought to you by Aeropostal, athletically inspired, comfortable clothes at reasonable prices, only at Aeropostal. Store locations, the website's right there for you at Aeropostal.com, providing scholarships through sponsorship. I poked with that younger girl there. <laughs> In another life. <laughs> Falker's back. You know why? He's under there doing his damage. He may miss it, but he's going to go get it. And then he's going to find somebody to scream. Tatum. If you can score against either one of these defenses, I'd send a fruit basket to your grandma because it's a big day. I hope you can score. I hope that people do appreciate the, the defense is absolutely has you where you can't. Everything going has to go too fast. Every pass is contested. Nine six. But that's why this league wins. Seriously, the defense is consistent. There's a kick by Mullins. They're going to put 15 on the clock. It was six when the kick occurred by Mullins. Saluki's fifth in the nation in defense. Only give up 57 a game. We mentioned how good Greg McDermott's club is defensively. And that's why we're sitting here with 10 minutes gone. It's nine to six. Crawford hit that shot earlier and Coleman slinks underneath. It's going to be on Falker and that's his second foul. That is not good news for Southern Illinois. Well, they got good minutes last night out of Boyle and Boyle has had good moments against Northern Iowa. So. Well, Northern Iowa's gone five minutes without scoring. Southern Illinois, better than that, five and a half minutes without scoring. Tony Boyle in now against Coleman. Ooh. And back to the line goes Coleman. This will be six free throw attempts by Coleman when this is done. And he could petition the league to defer those to Eric Crawford, who's 82 percent, but I don't think they're going to let him do that. Coleman fouls on Wesley Clements. 16 fouls now against Southern Illinois. We mentioned Coleman's 22 points, 15 rebounds in Cedar Falls against the Southern Illinois team. As good as they are defensively, that's hard to do. But against Wichita State, he had 18 and one half against the regular season champion Shockers. Well, he played last night with a great deal of enthusiasm and vigor. And three points, Coleman, all at the line. Coleman, which gets the attention of Greg McDermott. That was whistle was a little tardy. I did not see what happened. Hands are straight up there. Looks like maybe an elbow after the shot. Or just as the shot was released. Boyle's only 56% at the line. He's been a minute eater off the bench for Southern Illinois. And here comes a Saluki Mitz that needs to probably get something started. You know, he used to kid McDermott about his 400 plays he had on his 5 by 7 note cards. I think he's got some microchip now he uses <laughs> inside that suit. It's a big database, whatever it is. Tony 
Boyle gives Southern Illinois its seventh point. Young will guard you. We've seen that before. He's got Jacobson right now. Young on the Valley's all defensive team again. Nice. Nice. That's right there. Screen, use the screen, and then know when help comes that you can go back to a man who can really shoot the basketball. Crawford was 6 2 3. That's going to be an offensive foul against Southern Illinois, but let's look at Jacobson's pass. Use the screen, then when Shaw helps, very, very alertly step back, catch it, and you know he's going to shoot the ball so well. And here's an example of Jacobson's presence. That's one thing about Crawford. Oh my. Mike Sanzier with an offensive foul on Brooks McCallum. He had a hand push off earlier, and there's nothing called. I think maybe Mike Sanzier saw the first one and remembered it. Greg McDermott, not the happiest camper in St. Louis with that call. 13-7, Northern Iowa. Boyle, that's a bonus bucket. Tony Boyle only gets two a game. He's got three if you're counting. No one got against him. And one thing the Salukis will do, will rebound the basketball. They'll guard you and they'll rebound. They won't make all their shots, but they'll do the other two things. One field goal over the last 7.42 for Southern Illinois. Jacobson with a bump and run by Austin Brooks. That's the walk-on senior. And this is going to be the bonus for Northern Iowa. And Boyle for a freshman will also whop you when you go by. <laughs> well, he's learned that in this league. He's learned to survive. Jacobson missing the front end of a one and one, a 78% shooter normally. Coleman slipped inside the back porch. Southern Illinois has got some problems. They have 19 fouls and still 7.53 to go in the half. Coleman's at the line and we come back. 13-9, Northern Iowa. It's not been an easy uh, fall and winter for the McDermott family. This is Teresa McDermott, Greg's wife, diagnosed with breast cancer earlier in the fall. We got Sydney resting on her uh, arm right there. It's a great family. Nick and Doug right in front, the two sons, and then Sydney, the daughter with Teresa. But she's gone through chemotherapy. She delayed her next chemotherapy treatment till after the tournament. I think she's going to do it Monday, but she wanted to be at full strength for Arch Madness. But Griggs had a lot more on his mind than just basketball. Had a beautiful night for her when we were up there before. That was a, it was a very, very emotional night and for everyone. Eric Coleman to the line where it's been a struggle. Sometimes he looks like he wrote a book on how to shoot free throws. And other times <laughs> he needs to read that book. <laughs> Northern Iowa has 425 makes at the line for the year while their opponents have 389 attempts. And usually when you have that kind of stat you're 23 and 8. Fifteen nine Northern Iowa seven forty five left in the first twenty Bradley beat Wichita State earlier today Clemens can hit these not this time he's hit eight of his last eleven threes prior to that miss Southern needs to maybe get something out of their defense Mitch instead of ooh. It's an illegal screen. They were setting up a lob for Jacobson and Stout called for the moving pick. Let's check in with our Valley standings. Our um, way the tournament shakes down. Brought to you by Ameren, a legion of men and women making sure the night lights in the neighborhood flicker to life when called upon. Visit Ameren.com to learn more. 365 and then some. And that's two fouls on Stout. You can see right now we're we're about to have a final set for tomorrow. That'll be the that'll be a fun day, but this day to me is still the best day. The two games you get on semifinal day are, are the best. 
two things here a lot of emotion and a lot of intensity in both of these games. There's an offensive foul. Mike Sanzier's got his radar out. He's writing, he's got his ticket book out. He's writing tickets. If you're going to drive through my town, there's a new sheriff here. And I'm making my quota before three. It's a good idea here, Mitch, excuse me, but using Crawford to dribble the ball down, it makes a four man come down the floor and guard him and you lose the pressure. But now you've got to be able to run an offense and that's where they run into problems. Spacing gets to be a little bit of an issue at times. Crawford, number five, you see him. For Northern Iowa, the Valley's version of the Industrial Revolution in their changeable parts. You can play all five spots. He's had two big threes in this game. McCown had to launch. His shot clock is moving down. Again, McCown had two big threes last night, and that went over Missouri State. Southern Illinois is shooting 27 percent for 15 or 16. McCown has a problem right here because he can't take the ball and go by anyone. And that's that's what gets him. That's what causes problems when he's trying to initiate the offense. Jacobson flashed open, but nothing there. And Tatum, and there's an example of your defense. It wasn't a scoring opportunity, but at least opened up the floor a little bit for him. Let's go to Tom Ackerman. Mitch, some people have noticed this week that Northern Iowa coach Greg McDermott is wearing a ring on his right hand. That is the NCAA tournament ring from last year. He says, I never wear it, but I wore it to practice this week just so the guys could remember how good we are. He said he didn't want any self-doubt going into the tournament, so he's worn it all week. Just to tell his players, we'll, we're still very capable. Well, they've gone to the last two tournaments. Last year, they lost in the quarterfinals of Arch Madness and still made it. Took Wisconsin to the limit. The year before, they took Georgia Tech to the limit. And that Georgia Tech team played in the finals. A dunk by Foster of Southern Illinois has ignited the Egyptian dogs. Well, and on out of bounds playing Coleman helped when he didn't really need to. The defense was had the coverage, and then a man rolling the basket just shouldn't get a goal in. Jacobson has yet to score. He averages 14 a game. There's the shot. Little with the bank. <laughs> I thought Little had a, was going to have a three. Makes a hard shot right there. Found out little means more to this team than people realize even off the floor. He's provided leadership and direction as a senior out of Peoria, Illinois. See how soft they're playing Mullins inside the three point line. Young not there. Tony Young yet to score, Spoon averaging 12. That's the best look he's got. He hadn't had many looks. That's the thing. He hasn't had a lot of shots. 17 to 11, Northern Iowa, 419 remaining in the half. Let's see if I've seen that before. Just this time an air ball. Didn't have the glass to shoot at. That was a hard, that's a hard shot on the baseline. A little moisture on the floor, Chris Lowry. He's had a challenge too in talking about Chris's family. Last year his wife Erica with a difficult pregnancy, also with a special needs child. But he's had a lot on his mind too other than basketball the last two years and really has done a great job and shown a lot of maturity getting 47 wins in two years. Rollins don't want to shoot that three. No, he doesn't. That's, that's not, he knows he's not, that's not what he's really good at. Boys right there. Spoon, that is his second three since January 19th. <laughs> he is two for 17 since January 19th. Well, that's not very many attempts. You, 
17-14, Northern Iowa. Close to a walk right there. Coleman, Sweet, McCowan, oh. no, but Crawford's there. Cowan flipped the ball up there then rather than finishing it, but lucky for him that he's, he's got a teammate that's probably seen that before. Tatum, that's a tough take. He gets the roll. Jamal Tatum's got four. They're having a parade in downtown Carbondale. Brian Mullins hit a three. It's a three-point game. Coleman's been busy inside. A little too big a hurry. Coleman had, had Foster back down where he wanted him. He should have probably slowed down just a little. Tatum's got a lot of energy. Jeff City, Missouri, Jr. with the left hand. Davey Collins said there'll be, there'll be no charge here. One-point game. Timeout, Greg McDermott, Northern Iowa. He's got one to burn in this half. 157 left in the half. 19-18, watch Jamal Tatum. I think it's going to happen. There's going to be a switch off here in just a minute. Crawford ends up with him. Earlier in the year, I doubt that would have happened to Crawford. But Tatum makes the move, sees the man filling the lane. But just absolutely, his first step's good. Look at that, left hand, that's a pretty good finish right there. Great change of hands on his way in the air to the basket. And what a tournament he's having, Tatum now, with 31 points in the tournament in a game and a half. The Saluki's on a 7-2 run of the last 148. And we've seen this theme now constant throughout the tournament. Northern Iowa, seemingly things going well, but they look at the scoreboard, they're only two possessions ahead. We've seen it time and time again throughout this whole Arch Madness. Well, they just last couple times, getting the ball where you want it, but then not finishing the play. Things of that nature, not hitting the shot when you get an open three. And teams continue to guard even when they're not scoring. That's the hard thing. I don't, I don't know how you convince guys to do that. Nice. Jacobson on a swing around. And the ever-present Crawford will get free throws. Southern Illinois, their cavity right now, foul. One point lead for the Panthers. Nineteen eighteen, Northern Iowa leading Southern Illinois. In the first game, Marcella Somerville and Patrick O'Brien with a double-double combined. And uh, Bradley would win 60-52 over Wichita State there in the championship game. When Metro Sports takes its television cameras on the road, it, consider, it considers these hotel properties its home away from home. Please call these hotels or visit the websites of these properties when following your favorite team. We're at the Savas Center in downtown St. Louis. Back over to Mitch Holtis, who is standing by with... Uh, one of the Masters winners from the early 1970s, Charlie Spoonhour. <laughs> that wasn't even that, man. How was it? Did he say Cedars? Yes. He <laughs> did, didn't he? And he's on me. Yeah. We're in Butler Cabin here talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets by Danny Mack. Free throw down by Eric Crawford. He's got nine. Nine points in this game sounds like a lot. Northern Iowa's been to the line ten times, made six. They had six free throws and six field goals. Sounds a little, a little more aggressive on them all this time. track of the clock. Shaw lost track of it, and then Mullins did too. And there's Chris Lowry's reaction. 
trying to say you've got to know when to shoot the basketball. I think he wanted Shaw to shoot it. It's also where his freshman point guard needs to uh, be in the top gun seat and take charge. Down defensively was very good that time. Crawford has it blocked. Still 11 second differential game clock, shot clock. There's a bump. A little bump and Tatum. Still not in the one and one. Southern's got two good looks on out of bounds plays. Let's see if this happens again. It's still a five second differential. between the shot clock and game clock. A three would give Southern Illinois the lead. It's either going to be a high, it looks like it's going to be a high screen or just a flat and potato. Jostin is out there now. You see him defensively for Northern Iowa. He just got here. Now he's got to guard Tatum. Clemens in the corner. Rob. Look at Foster for Southern Illinois. And Shaw scores a very difficult shot at the end of the half. Hustle play all the way. Foster and Shaw both involved in that. I'm not sure how the ball gets in the basket here. There's your miss. Here's the hustle part right here. Knock loose. Right into traffic, probably trying to draw a foul, Mitch, and ends up just taking the basket. Four of the five Salukis end up being involved in that play. Shaw able to get it in the goal. But keep in mind, Southern Illinois had over 20 offensive rebounds last night against Evansville. Let's go to Tom Ackerman. Coach, quite a competitive first half again, and this one could go down to the wire. I mean, it, it, what do you expect from us, too? When we play together, we play hard. and uh, Just a great, great half of basketball. Two, team, two teams playing very hard. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Thank you. Our visit with the coaches all year brought to you by Mercy Health Plans, an innovative health management company empowering members to make healthy choices. The way we care makes all the difference. These two teams met in the last regular season game, and it was won by Southern Illinois in a 45-44 game. This one much the same, tied at 20 at halftime. awaits the final. You look at Savage Center, downtown St. Louis. Bradley's already in the finals tomorrow. Northern Iowa and Southern Illinois slugging it out 2020 at halftime. Let's go to Tom Ackerman. Okay, thanks, Coach. Another tight game, and your club has uh, become very accustomed to these. Uh, we've had a lot of them this year and uh, had a couple of them against the Saluki, so I'm not surprised at this one, but uh, they've got 14 points in the paint to our six. Uh, we got to the free throw line. We just didn't make our free throws, so we need to try to get back there the second half. Good luck in the second Thank half. Thanks. Our chat with the coaches all year brought to you by Mercy Health Plans, an innovative health management company empowering members to make healthy choices. The way we care makes all the difference. Some noteworthy non-numbers, if I uh, could say that. Ben Jacobs in the leading active scorer in Arch Madness history, scoreless. So is Tony Young, and we've seen him explode in the second half of the season for Southern Illinois. We got we got folks with bagels on their plate. Chris McCown, who is the leading scorer in the history of the state of Iowa, is that right? He's got a zero. I'm telling you, it's, it's it's baskets are hard to come by, and I think people have rushed some shots. Be interesting to see again where coaches go in the first play of the second half. Always, always fun. Tatum leads Southern Illinois with six points, while Eric Crawford leading Northern Iowa with nine. And there's a quick bucket. Eric Coleman spoon. That's his first field goal to go with five made free throws. Cowan again screening across. I would think something's going to be done. Ooh. Try to get the ball into the paint. 
And the foul, the fouls, I tell you, if you can get another foul on Stout, that keeps him on the bench, and that's that's been big as far as this game. Watch Falker, boom. Shot to the back of the head. <laughs> it's okay, it's an inbounds play. Mullins chases it down. And McCown starts the second half soft on Mullins. Falker was open for a minute after the screen, but the, it was missed by Young. There's a bump, Jacobson bumping. Young trying to turn the corner. First foul on Jacobson. Walker's back doing his job. He's going to try to get somebody open. He'll screen and then re-screen. Just inside the line, Matt Shaw with two. He's got six. We're tied at 22. Bradley beat Wichita State earlier. Too little on big screens. That time it was by Jacobson. Coleman with a kick out. Little. Well, in this game, you better lock your back porch. You can see the front porch, but they're going to come in the back door. I've seen it happen before. Two to shoot for Jacobson. Little no. Oh, nice rebound. A try mirror rebound. Stout, the leading rebounder in the conference. Nine boards a game. When you get an open look, you need to take the shot. Because there's not going to be many. Coleman wants it again. Little trying to get out of the corner, and he got popped. They're hitting the back of the hip. And they're saying, how does he get hurt? And the official's probably saying, self-inflicted. Because I've heard that before. Let's see where he gets hit here. He's grabbing a rib, too. You know what? He kind of just he turned awkward. You didn't need to see that. No. <laughs> if he does that at my age, he'd be in the training room for, the, for about the six-day deal. He's kind of been going through that. 22-22 tie. There's a tough shot by oh Jacobson. My. His first points of the game. That was good defense, too. That's That was an earned, a very earned basket. We have seen the young lad do it many times before. Tatum, stout with the block. Second in the league in blocks behind O'Brien of Bradley. Here's the man needs to get started right here. Mullins stripping Coleman. He'll do that, won't he? Mullins spends a lot of time for a little point guard, a lot of time around the basket pestering people. He'll sneak in the back porch, too, if you leave it unlocked. Leaves the league in steals. Falker, and there's that left hand we saw develop as the season progressed. Each basket's hard to get, and it's nobody's, there's no gimmies. Falker didn't get the black shoe memo, evidently. He's got his white shoes on. They're untied. They haven't seen that. Well, he's 0 for 2. He's got the wrong shoes. He needs to wear loafers. Somebody needs to point that out, or he'll find out soon enough. Made him with a bump and grind. He's got the foul. His first. Falker is the only one with white shoes. I was checking the bench. There's a cameraman with green socks. <laughs> that may be the ugliest pair of socks I've ever seen to go with those legs. Even assistant coach Rodney Watson with black shoes on. <laughs> Falker changed his shoes at halftime. You know, I didn't score. Here's your double team. It's hard to double twice in one position. 
That was a good look that time. That was one of the best looks. Crawford got, he just didn't hit the shot. 24-24 tie. The Salukis have not led since early in the game. You can get an easy basket some way, Mitch, or some unheard of basket like that one right there. Well, Mullins has already given him an unheard of three. Oh, my, there's your play. It's Tony Young's first bucket of the game. You mentioned it earlier. Could they get anything out of their defense? They just did. And Jacobson, the veteran, got picked. They got another one, maybe. Well, the long arm of the law, Eric Coleman got it. A hustle play backfires on the Salukis that time. That was a very, very good defensive effort that just went south. The elongated man, Eric Coleman's long arms got it. He wants out, Coleman's gassed. Tied at 26, just getting good. Shaw. Shaw buried Coleman in the post that time. He said, got tired. The place to be tired is on this end, the offensive end, not the defensive end. He was tugging on his jersey. John Little's at the table, but they can't get a stoppage to play to get him in. There's a favorite Northern Iowa play. They slip lob, and they couldn't get it done that time. Southern Illinois waiting on him. Now you're trying to get a four-point lead, and that'll seem like a ten-point lead if you can get it. There's the guy that might do it. Because Little Egypt is barking. Egyptian dogs barking with a two-point lead at the 14-12 mark of the game. Towns got a group of people guarding him. And Jacobson starting to hit shots. Two this half, he's got five. Just about the time you think you're going to get a little bit of a cushion, something comes back to get you. It drags you back. Jacobson just five of his last 18 from three. Mullins, can he hit two in one game? No. That one didn't have the rotation that the one that went in did. It looked like a screwball. That had weird rotation on it. Good pass would have been a basket that time. It looks almost like Coleman's giving in a little bit to being tired. Stout isn't, of course, he's resting the first time. Well, they wanted a sub for him, but there's just been not a stoppage of play to get these guys at the table in. Playoff by Jacobson, save. Block. Strike oh. two, that's a barely a two by Crawford. He's got 11. I think this will be the timeout. Nobody's happier about it than Coleman. <laughs> he might stop and shake hands with the Saluki bench on that. 31-28, Northern Iowa, 12.55 to go. Ben Jacobson has struggled from the floor in February, but in March, starting to warm it up. Northern Iowa leading 31-28, 12.55 to go in the game. Let's look at the bracket from March Madness. Brought to you by Casey's General Store, a convenience store, and a whole lot more. It's Casey's General Store. Well, as my grandpa used to say, pretty explanatory itself. Pretty good teams already gone home, Mitch. Missouri State was really playing well until they ran into UNI last night. The game right up here with Wichita State, that hurts them. I'm, I'm sure that they're in the tournament, but that I know that they wanted to win and, and go ahead and run through the bracket. Missouri State with an outstanding RPI, even though losing in the quarterfinals. And a team that will get very strong consideration to make the NCAA tournament field, or should. I thought when they beat Creighton in the last regular yep. season game, that pretty well left them in the tournament. I thought one of those two would get in off that win. Again, a great RPI, great year for Barry Henson late in the year. But here, Northern Iowa and Southern Illinois trying to get to Bradley in the finals. 
28, Northern Iowa on top of Southern Illinois. Second half action in game number two of our doubleheader. When Metro Sports takes its television cameras on the road, it considers these hotel properties its home away from home. Please call these hotels or visit the websites of these properties when following your favorite team. If you're just joining us from the Savas Center in downtown St. Louis, 60-52, number five Bradley advances to the championship. We have had record crowds this weekend. Another one here, Mitch Holtz. This looks like it's going to be set this afternoon. Northern Iowa's turned out with record sales. Wichita State with a record group, Dan. And a bunch of Salukis <laughs> have worked their way into the building. <laughs> Mullins. No. Jacobson a little more careful with the ball around there on that path. Northern Iowa gets a bucket here and takes a five or six point lead. It's going to seem like 15. <laughs> McCowan with six to shoot. Got to the goal, just didn't get the basket. Clemens, one of the youngsters on this team. In fact, it's a very young Southern Illinois team. Six of the top nine players, freshmen or sophomores. Lukies have been to the NCAA's four straight years. Last year beat St. Mary's before losing to Oklahoma State in Oklahoma City. So Lukey's going small. They've got really four guards on the floor. Tatum sets up Foster. Jamal Foster with the bucket, the assist to Jamal Tatum. Tatum's dribble penetration forced the help. needed bucket for Southern Illinois. Stout wants it to go against Foster. Crawford robbed after he got young in the air. Another tip back. Ooh. Stout open if they can find him. Young had to foul to prevent an easy basket. And that came off the pick and roll, Mitch, right there. First foul on Young. Second team foul, 31-30, still 10-36 to go. A look at Chris Lowry's wife, Erica. 31 to 30, Northern Iowa. A great lady. 10:36 remaining in the game. Let's go to Tom Ackerman. Mitch, the Valley just announced that attendance for today's session is 17,772, the largest crowd in Missouri Valley Conference tournament history. The previous single session record was in the 2003 semifinals, and through four sessions, the tournament attendance this year just under 50,000, 49,770. That's already the fourth highest tournament total in league history. We have another day tomorrow, and as Doug Elgin, the commissioner, mentioned to me recently, the fact that the final is on Sunday could increase attendance. Yeah, pushing everything back a day. That and the way this league has just been off the chain. Doug Elgin, the commissioner of the league, that is a proud papa, I'm telling you. But Spoon, he's worked so hard to elevate this league from scheduling to helping administrators build an infrastructure. It's happening up and down the conference. League's better from top to bottom, as you've mentioned. The other thing, it's just like little things. It's not little. Officiating. The officiating's better because they've given Jim Bain the, the wherewithal to bring in more people and better people. Now, if you sit down for a game of spades with people that follow college basketball and said, list your top basketball officials in Division I, we've seen most of them work this league this year. That's for sure. Well, we had Burr Higgins just for two in the last couple of days. Wilmer, yep. Hillary. I mean, just... Collins, Sands, and Higgins working this one. Extended pressure right here. And I have a hunch this, this might be pretty effective. 32-30 Northern Iowa. Still 10-10 to go. Bradley awaiting the winner in tomorrow's finals. 
Jacobson so smart. He uses his body to get a little separation, but now no one to throw it to. Now that, that makes Jacobson look bad, but Mitch, there's no one open. You have to work to get open. If you, you can't just stand or stick your hand up, you've either got to break and get open or you've got to screen and get someone else up. I don't know if I have it. 32-30, Northern Iowa, 9.58 to go in the game. Listen, Chris Lowry trying to figure out a way to score. It's been hard to do throughout this entire tournament. Steal it and go down the floor, as Young did earlier. Those type baskets seem like they're worth about a touchdown. In these kind of games. Uh -huh. Set play, Jacobson. Falker was there to defend and board. Pretty good idea for Northern Iowa's fan. Oh, they had everything was right. The ball just didn't go in the basket. And now going to Falker is a good idea right here. They double him post to post. Young just got four. He's gone to the basket twice. Quick right there. Clemens down the floor trying to guard. One of the nice things for Clemens as a freshman, being able to go down and, and play and understand playing that hard defensively, because a lot of times freshmen think if they're six feet from you, bent over, they're in a defensive, you know, that's a defensive stance, and it really isn't. I get a feeling that's one of the first things that's brought up <laughs> at Southern Illinois' practices. After you've been recruited. <laughs> now you're here. We're fixing the guard a lot. Added 32, just under nine minutes left in the game. Bradley beat Wichita State earlier. There'll be help right here. Oh, they're usually there. Good look for Stout. He just didn't make the shot. Walker with the rebound. Salukis can take the lead. Little Egypt cast their vote for a Saluki bucket here. Tatum. Spoon, the three ball has not been there. They're one for seven from three, but that is now 12 points from the two guards, Young and Tatum, at the goal. Hardest thing to do in basketball right now is guard a dribble. Officials have been told and instructed not to let you put your hands on people. Crawford, he's hit so many big shots. Out off Southern Illinois. Probably tickled to death to get that over shot. Here's Tatum, and he starts, hesitates a little bit here when the help comes. Uh-oh, here I go again. Pretty good idea. And that's not an easy shot. He tricked Eric Crawford. And that's not easy to do. Both these teams, Mitch, help so well. They help a great deal, and they help very well. See, here comes help by Falcon. That's a great lean in oh, by right. Jacobson. Jacobson's stronger than he looks. You just look at him, you think, you know, he's all right. But he bumps into people, and, and he doesn't bounce backwards. He keeps going where he wants to go. First team all valley. Athletic, tough. Leads the league in minutes played. Left hand here. Tied at 34. Good defense right there. An illegal screen, I think. Yeah. He set as many screens as Falker does. That's going to happen to the son. Three fouls on Falker, just 14 fouls on Southern Illinois. Still 7-11 to go, and all knotted up. 
7 11 to play. The winner will get Bradley in the championship. Both these teams have shot the basketball much better here in the second half. Northern Iowa 40%, Southern Illinois at 50. Time now for this date in history brought to you by the Renaissance Grand Hotel St. Louis. Back in 1987, the first ever State Farm MVC tournament final that required OT. Wichita State collected 14 points and 10 rebounds from Steve Grayer to edge Tulsa 79 74. The Renaissance Grand Hotel St. Louis, the official St. Louis Hotel of the Missouri Valley Conference and Mitch the winner gets Bradley tomorrow Bradley of course won in game number one for those of you just joining us 60 to 52 back to you and Danny Mack the good news is somebody's going to win this game the bad news is they're going to have to play Bradley tomorrow those guys <laughs> we said it before we could put a phone number up here and try to take calls to see who wants to play Bradley right now but are they playing good basketball and they're defending that's the thing I, that sets them apart right now they're defending so well Mullins got the pick and then the kick. Mullins sneaky. Ninth in the nation, getting three steals per game for Chris Lowry's Salukis. At the end of this day, Jacobson's going to think he's joined at the hip with Young. Pretty good idea that that uh, Northern Iowa had enter the ball to a smaller player and then have him distribute from from the post area. Not bad. Six thirty six to go. Chris Lowry twice winning this as a point guard in 93 and 94 for Rich Heron and the Salukis. They won three in a row in the mid 90s. They had four total titles in Arch Madness. Tatum just missed that. He got separation. Foul. Stout set two screens and the second screen he was still moving. At times that's not the screener's fault, Mitch. If, if you put the ball on the floor as the guard while he's still moving, you've got to give him a chance to get set. Wasn't a horrible bump, but it's just still a bump. There's an advantage game. Six minutes to go. Southern Illinois tied at 34 with Northern Iowa. They played overtime in Cedar Falls. It was a 46-45 game in Carbondale when Tony Young hit a last-second shot. Mullins, another three. Pumps his fist in the air. He had, it bears repeating, one three make between today and January 19th. He's got two today. He thinks he's Kent Williams. <laughs> He's enjoying those threes. 37-34, Southern Illinois. Walker with another good rebound. I thought Jacobson maybe had one of his few open looks there and just wasn't used to it and didn't take it. And now the Egyptian dogs will deflate it for a while. Still a lot of basketball to be played. Little doing a very, very good job on a hard player to guard. Staff, staff's going to be careful. He's got three fouls. Tatum. Air ball. You have to be careful that you don't lose your momentum. By hanging on to it a little too, a little bit too much at this point in the game. Well, that's a fine line. You don't want to oh. shoot it quick and stupid, but yet. Oh, and Tatum, I think Tatum was trying to be aggressive with the ball. He just got guarded, which seems to be a fairly common occurrence in this game. Northern Iowa down three. There's your lob play again. Screen across the lane. That time Stout didn't take it. He faked like he was coming across, then bounced back, and there was a lob, a great lob. Nice play. Northern Iowa's got a patent on that. 
And they run it, and they run it, and they run it. 37-36, 7 Illinois, 4-13 remaining in the game. Chris Lowry's seen that play before, and he expects his players to defend that a little better than what they did. As you can tell, it's a timeout by, by his action. Take a look at our game reset, a presentation of Charter Communications, your one-stop entertainment provider of digital TV, high-speed internet, and telephone services. 188-GET-CHARTER. Still plenty of timeouts, both sides. But here's something to look at. Look at this. It is a, a long time before anybody gets to the bonus here. Only eight fouls called in the first 13-plus minutes of this half. A lot of games this year, Mitch, we've said, well, they're really letting them play when we thought people were getting bumped. I just think this has been a very well-played defensive basketball game. I haven't seen many fouls that I thought should have been called. I just think it's been good defense. Salukis down in Carbondale to this team, 14-2. Fought back to win by one. They were down in the first half of this game. Now they lead by one with the ball. They lose it. Jacobson steals it. Look at Falker come and help. You don't get many centers down the floor that agile. Oh, my. Young, and that is his second foul in nanoseconds. He has three fouls for the game. The All-Valley selection with his third foul. Still not in the bonus, though, Northern Iowa. 37-36, Southern Illinois by a digit with 3.49 to go in the game. Bradley awaits the winner. A couple guys we want to acknowledge. Mike Kern, Associate Commissioner of the Missouri Valley Conference for Media Relations. Spoonie's busted his butt. And he is Sports Illustrated, Sporting News, New York Times, on and on. And Jack Watkins, who is about as passionate as anybody you'll find. Associate Commissioner of this league. And has built quite an empire with his television network. And about as nice of people as you're ever going to find. That's a lot of times you find people are good at their job, but you don't like to be around them. And that's not the case with the Valley people. They deserve all the accolades that they are getting nationally. Commitment by the administrators, great coaches, tough teams, and tough players. And now the nation notices. Hard to get a shot. Deep one, Jacobson. Now that's after working really hard to get a shot, to get a good shot. And that's how, how well the Salukis are playing defense. Cowan bumping Mullins. No call. Northern Iowa's only got three team fouls. And that can be an issue. Because late in the game, you may need to put somebody on the line. Unless you can get the lead. Tatum. Boy, he curls hard and comes oh. to the ball, and the ball just doesn't go down for him in this game. He does everything right, Mitch. He, he turns his shoulders. Everything he needs to do, he does. Northern Iowa can take the lead, 37-36, Southern Illinois. 2.25 remaining in the game. Double team. 15 on the clock now. Crawford looked like he turned down a pretty good two after he ball faked on the three. I'm, I bet you anything, as hard as shots are to get, his coaches wish he'd taken that. He may not feel comfortable off the move still with that foot. 15, you better start right now if you're going to get a shot against this team. Young, still with Jacobson. Little, he's been a big shot artist for this team. First, second half points, John Little. Northern Iowa's got the lead. Just getting ready to say, that's if you're going to just score, that's a big one to get. Little loves that baseline. 157 to go. This is a hard, this is a hard shot off the move on the baseline. Nothing materializes with your two seniors out front. So Little has to make this play right here. You can see Tatum disappointed with himself that that happened. Little had to step up this year with Eric Crawford's injury. We saw him carry his team against Missouri State when he had 19. 
before this year really just a sub in defender guy this year able to score. Now where does Southern go to get its points with inside of two minutes to go. Well they haven't had great success with their normal scores with Tatum and Young that that, that hasn't been there. Mullins has been the surprise shooting the three. Twenty to shoot. Mullins needs help. Shaw foul. Oh. And they're going to rule it on the shot. So Shaw is going to get free throws. It's a hard thing to do, but if you find yourself beat on a cut and you have fouls to waste, or not waste, but use, if you can foul before you get into this situation, putting people on the line, it's really a good thing to do. But Mitch, you spend all winter saying, don't foul, don't foul, don't foul. Pretty hard to say foul. And it takes a real aware player to understand the situation. Yeah. Like but if you get one like that that knows, hang on to him. Game tied. Shaw hit one, missed one. Shaw's got nine. Knotted up at 38. 130 remaining in the game. This game just like the one in Carbondale at the end of the regular season. Now here's probably the screen on the baseline. And then the back, yeah, there's the same one. That's the one that the, that the guy can bump back on, the center can bump back on. He just didn't. Close to five count here. Jacobson nails ah, it out of the good. top of Mullins. Mullins on the all-defensive team, and Jacobson doesn't care. Well, well, that won't take him off the team. That was good defense. That's a hard basket. 40-38 Northern Iowa inside of a minute. Still got fouls if you're Northern Iowa, if you need them. 31 second differential. See, that's fine. That foul didn't bother anybody. You saw Jacobson then. He knows. All you got to do is watch his head, and he's a grin. Well, here he is offensively. That's just, that's just a hard basket. He didn't get loose. No separation. He just made a hard shot. He's got a scrapbook full of shots like that for the University of Northern Iowa. When the coach greets you like that after you foul, you've done something right. Usually when you foul, you hate to go see them, particularly a big old coach. Let's go ahead and announce our players of the game brought to you by State Farm. First of all, for Southern Illinois, Brian Mullins. He hit two threes. That's what wasn't expected, but his defense and leadership was. The threes are just gravy. There's your dribble penetration. That's a play made for him. And he looked good on that shot. He was happy about it. But he's defended well, handled the basketball. He's, he's for a freshman, pretty good freshman there. And for the University of Northern Iowa, Eric Crawford, who's in the middle of that huddle with Greg McDermott because he gave this team points when they were badly needing them. Hit the threes, he hit two threes early. He's got three offensive rebounds to go with it. You can tell he's still not 100% comfortable out there, but he's it's the kind of guy you need on the floor if you're trying to win a ball game. This team more than likely Northern Iowa headed to the NCAA tournament. He'll get another week to rest. That'll help him. Our players of the game brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. But if he wins this game, he's got one more to go tomorrow. I would think uh, a week of rest would be good for Northern Iowa in Toto, the whole team. 35 on the clock right here. 12 second differential. You just don't want to give up a three right now if you're Northern Iowa. Young still fouls to give. Mullins with the left hand. Oh my hip hat. What were you saying about the freshman? <laughs> I said he was pretty good. I think his intestines go up into his neck. This kid's tough. Limping over to the huddle. Watch this shot to tie the game. Nothing materializes for anyone else. There's really nothing good going on right here. 
except this shot at the back end. If that doesn't go down, Saluki's are in huge trouble right here. You practice that every day, as long as the coaches aren't out on the floor. There's your drive for five, still alive. Southern Illinois trying to make its fifth consecutive NCAA tournament. But now Chris Lowry, fifth best team in the country defensively, has got to defend Northern Iowa. Northern Iowa's got the luxury of picking the clock all the way down, Spoon. It's pretty hard to do and then get a good shot. If, if the other team that you're playing against will, will kind of huddle around and protect the goal, and you can stand around, pass it, and think, it's pretty good. But then you'll say, well, we'll run our play with seven seconds or whatever. These guys aren't going to do that with Salukis. They're going to come down the floor, and they're going to make life miserable. It's a game reset. Saluki's out of timeouts. Neither team is in the bonus yet, although the next foul on the Salukis would put Northern Iowa one and one. And this is a good idea. Now we talked about this, having the having your four man bring the ball down the floor. Now somebody's got to come get the ball from you. When do you start if you're Northern Iowa? Seven, probably. Game tied at 40. Bradley awaits the winner. Jacobson with the ball. It's hit. Big shot after big shot. Started it with six. There's the shot. Jacobson, no. How about five extra minutes? Well, they did it in Cedar Falls. <laughs> they almost did it in Carbondale. Did you really expect anything different? I've been waiting for an overtime ball game. I, I thought with all the good teams, all the parity, I thought we'd have more of this. Well, you got your senior the shot, Mitch. That's and he really comes fairly clean right here. He's got a good guy screaming that doesn't move on the screen. There's pretty good defense too. There are hands around him. Smart not to foul by Little right there too. A pretty good candidate, the leading active scorer in Arch Madness history to try to give him the look. Last year against Wichita State, hit a shot at the buzzer in Wichita that arguably shot Northern Iowa into the NCAA tournament. So put five more on the board. Well, he started that with about, what, 5.7. So he was thinking around six or seven to go. There would have been time for a rebound. There would have been time for a pass to someone in the shot. This has happened before. Do you realize the score? Well, at halftime of this game was 20-20. Now it's 40-40. But the score at the end of regulation back on January 16th at the Unidome in Cedar Falls, Iowa, was 48-48. The score at the game a week ago in Carbondale was 46-45. Let's go to Tom Ackerman. Mitch, the Missouri Valley Conference tells me the last time that there was an overtime game in the semifinals of the tournament, Charlie Spoonauer was coaching Southwest Missouri State 1992 when the Bears beat Illinois State 61-58. That's the last time we've had an overtime game in the semis. Well, there you go. There you go. What'd you do to get the Redbirds that day? Uh, let's see. Rodney Perry made a good play that he broke the play and messed it up and got a basket. We did we did it wrong as I recall. Pick and roll. roll. Sweet move. Anna and one. Crawford got there too late. And Randall Falker gets his third and fourth points of the game. You just don't expect a basket to come this easy. It's a high pick and roll. Here comes Falker back. Now the, the here's the, the coup de gras right here is a little hard for him to add on though. Only 54% at the line for the Oh, he got it. Three-point play, Falker. He'd only made four of his last 12 free throws. Toughest points are to get in this game, a three-point possession. Looms large. Could be an answer right there for three. No. Little with the board. <laughs> oh, 
Greg McDermott, you see him at the top of the screen directing traffic. He is an air traffic control over there. You go here, you go here. Look at Chris <laughs> on the other end. He's guarding. We got one guarding and one saying shooter. Young sneaking in there. Oh. Passed up a shot with 10 on the shot clock, and now it's down to seven. Crawford to tie it. Nope. The shot clock violation before the tip by Stout. And you go back, Charlie, to the three that Jacobson passed up, and you had a feeling they weren't going to get as good a look after that one. There was nothing there. No, that's that's the thing in a game that's where the defense is this good. If you get an open look, you need to take it, even though you may not be comfortable. Nice job of closing out by Shaw. Shot clock's dead, as you can see right there, before the shot was ever taken. Northern Iowa three and one this year in overtime games, including a win over Iowa in overtime at the Unidome on December 6th. The same night Indiana State beat Indiana. Well, another basket. If you're Southern Illinois, you don't feel good, but you're a little. You got some breathing room because getting two baskets, getting one basket's hard enough. Good defense right there, my goodness. Five to shoot. And a foul. Little at the grab. And that will put Southern Illinois in the one and one. As hard as these teams have played, it's difficult to imagine that they, it would take them 22 minutes to put somebody in the one and one. That's what's happened. And this is not, if you're Northern Iowa, a good man to send to the line. 8-0 is the percentage for Jamal Tatum at the line. There's a tip out. I'm telling you, this league leads the nation in tip out. The Valley Tip Out DVD available <laughs> on Charlie's website. <laughs> that kills you. Missed shot and then a rebound. It just absolutely just... 240 left in the overtime. Three point lead for the Egyptian Dogs. Shaw fouled Stout. And another good free throw shooter goes to the line. Four fouls on Grant Stout. There, he's got his note cards out. The computer must have gone down. He's going to put Coleman in. Then he said, "Now nah, go back and sit down. Shaw's got a couple shots here. Look at McMullins over on the side as he leaves the court. He must have sprained an ankle or got kicked in the leg or something because he's uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't moving too fast. Spoon, he was limping earlier after he hit that tough runner for the two. Tied the game in regulation. Limping around like he got kicked. 45-40. Southern Illinois, 2.30 to go. And now a sense of urgency for Northern Iowa. And the white shirts are talking about stops. That's what they're thinking about. There's the lob again. My gosh, they did it again. That's the play. You're going to look at it. <laughs> the Southern bench, the Southern bench is just having a fit because that's the play right there where he doesn't accept the screen. It's called a bump back, and they lob over the top. There's a screen for him. You can see the guard set the screen. He just doesn't use it. Mitch Holtis and Charlie Spoonar. Arch Madness semifinal overtime. Bradley has already won, beating the one seed Wichita State. Here's Southern Illinois and you and I replicating what happened between these two teams in the regular season. Three point lead for Southern Illinois and now Northern Iowa. We have seen them, you know, they don't press much. We saw him when they pressed Missouri State and they won the game. And remember, we talked to Coach afterwards, and he said, we don't practice it a great deal, but for some reason, our kids are smart and they know where to go. And they have, and every time we've seen them use it, although they're not using it here, every time we've seen them use it, they have forced turnovers. Three-point lead for Southern Illinois. 
The Salukis 20 and 10 with an RPI of 44. Northern Iowa 23 and 8 with an RPI of 21. Mullins is here. Someone on that bench told him to get back in. <laughs> that, that will heal you quickly. Shot clock's under 15. It's about time to start something with the Southern Illinois. Mullins, seven to shoot. Shaw, big time. 13 for Matt Shaw. He's got four in the overtime. And that came off the screen. That was not by accident. That was by design. He had 16 points and six rebounds against Northern Iowa in Carbondale. He hit two big threes in that game, Spoon, to allow Southern Illinois to get the victory. You can see Mullins looking. Now, here's your screen. See the screen by, by Young right there? That's a good job of screening by Tony Young. Everybody thinks Young's going to shoot it, and he's a screener. And Jacobson gets fouled, and he goes to the line to get an easy free throw down. If you get a free throw, you've got to be so happy because now you don't have anybody guarding you. Tony Young has four fouls for Southern Illinois. Still 136 to go. Now you got to think about pressing if you're Northern Iowa. And here they come. Here's the press that'll have the trap with it. Still just a one possession lead for the Salukis. No one to foul on the floor right now unless Falker gets the ball. If Falker gets the ball like right now, but you've got a man with four fouls guarding him. So you can't go out and use Stout to foul. Ooh. Now you try to defend the clock, but Mullins has been feisty. Shaw, fresh 35, little fouled. Rebounding the ball then would have been such a such a wonderful thing. Now Mullins is is, is hurt. He's limp, limping to the bench after this. I think anyone hit him, Mitch. I think that's just landing on his foot, and you can see him favoring his right ankle. I thought he was looking at his left calf the left last time. Now we've gone to the right ankle. Well, they're both hurt. Shaw to the line. He has been big time in overtime. Four points, two of two at the line, and a field goal. Four and five or six points in this game. You're, you're in a contest for high point man. As hard as this thing's played. Shaw, we saw him hit big shots against Creighton and Carbondale this year. It's a five point lead for Chris Lowry Salukis. 66 seconds to go. Bradley awaits the winner. A little. Oh, in and out. out chasing but he's got four fouls he doesn't want to foul they foul Tatum and it's little and he's going to foul out I don't know if, if Chris Larry no I don't think he got the timeout he was trying to get a timeout eight seconds were off the shot clock or off the clock coming up the floor well here's a question plus it was almost a 10. That's what I was saying. Uh, yeah. And that's why Chris Lowry was trying to get a timeout. It doesn't look like they're going to. There There's no foul. No foul. He got the timeout, saved, saved the 10 count, and also <laughs> saved Little. So Little's still in the game. Southern Illinois has got to inbound it. Let's take a look at it. Slukies are now out of timeouts. The whistle had blown. It looks like they were just stumbling along, but the whistle had already blown. 46.9 left. 49-44 is Southern Illinois. Southern's probably going to send somebody long here. Southern Illinois has scored in all four possessions of overtime. Three of those four, Matt Shaw, and there's your foul. The fifth foul on John Little disqualified at 44.3 seconds left in overtime.
Greg McDermott using his full time here with John Little fouling out with six points. And Travis Brown is going to come into the game, the freshman that played just seven minutes in last night's win over Missouri State. But we've seen him hit big shots. There's Little going out of the game. This is Brown, the freshman. He had three threes against Bucknell in the bracket buster win, and Northern Iowa wouldn't have had that win in double overtime. Tatum with a pair. Southerns hit six straight free throws in overtime. That's a young ball club doing that. You always think of seniors doing that. That's a three possession lead. Ten points for Jamal Tatum. And making up seven on the Saluki defense is very, very difficult to do. Can't do it very quickly. Crawford missing. Brown has it blocked. Foul on Jacobson. Southern Illinois has been to three, sorry, four straight NCAA tournaments. But the one thing they have not done in a while is win Arch Madness. It has been since 1995 when they won three in a row. But it looks like they're headed to the finals and they will play an old rival, the Bradley Braves. And they've split with Bradley this year. And how close is the margin? They needed a last second Ooh. shot. Tatum missing the free throw here. They got a last second shot by Young to beat Northern Iowa. Or they could have dropped as low as a five or six seed. One more stop is what you need if you're wearing a white shirt. Good defense right there. Hard to get a shot. Jacobson. Chased down by Young, and Southern Illinois is headed to the finals. Chris Lowry won it as a point guard in 93 and 94. Has a shot at winning it as a head coach tomorrow against Bradley with an eight-point lead with 11.5 seconds to go. And as good a job as Chris Lowry did last year, taking over from Matt Painter. What a job he's done this year with six of his nine top players, freshmen or sophomores. No question about it. And if you're a young coach or if you're on a team, guard somebody, because that's how Southern's here. Guard somebody. That's how the teams that are playing in the finals are defending. That's what they're doing right now. In a league that has been built as the nation's best non-BCS basketball conference because as a league it defends. Top to bottom, Jacobson with two. And Northern Iowa has a great resume. An RPI of 21, Charlie. They're going to have a 23-9 and nine record. I think we can fully expect to see them on the board next Sunday, a week from tomorrow. I would, uh, I would be hugely surprised if they were not. Good wins. The thing is, go back to their early wins. LSU is still, that thing is, is an amazing win. When you think about LSU on the road and you think about the teams in their own league that couldn't go in there and do that. I looked at the Falker jam, led to a three-point play. That was the Rawlings play of the game, brought to you by Rawlings, the official equipment of the Missouri Valley Conference. And now Falker's making free throws like he's Kent Williams. Falker makes free throws and Mullins makes threes. And you see a good hug by Jacobson and Young after the after the fight that they had with each other. That's what's great about the league. You mentioned it yesterday, but that's what's great. The nation has noticed the best non-BCS conference in the country now makes a very strong bid because the two teams out of the six in the top of the RPI, six teams in this league above 45 in the RPI, 
and the two lowest coming in now play for the finals. This could be a league that gets four, possibly five in the big dance, and deservedly so. Charlie, it's been a phenomenal year and very enjoyable. It's been a great year, Mitch, and it's been fun to watch the league. I mean, I, I realize that we've got maybe a little undue pride in it, but I don't think so. It's just great to see the, the teams and see how they've developed over the year and see the respect that the league's got all over the country. It's a big-time league. America's Renaissance Conference tomorrow in the finals. It is Bradley and Southern Illinois for the automatic bid. For Charlie Spooner, I'm Mitch Holtis. Thanks for watching.